Skyjack's Log, New Horizon, April 5th. Entry 2. Landed in port, something or other, a few days ago. I really don't even know how to pronounce the names of all these zebra settlements. Never mind how to spell them. Anyway, the welcoming part was as vibrant as ever. That being that there wasn't one. No, we just made port and found a place to sleep for the night. As cheerful as that place was, too. I swear, though, if there was one thing these stripes can do right, it's cook. That, and doesn't make up the fact that they're all completely bonkers. I can't count how many times I got one telling me that I have some cryptic destiny or that I should watch out for bad omens. Or even stupider things like ponies with beards. It's almost like they have something else to do all the way out here, but talk about a load of rubbish. Well, I can't say that I'm not parting with one single bit this time. No fortune-telling, no freaky potions for me. Besides, the locals aren't the only ones I've got my eyes on. It all seems a little bit uneasy among the crew, too. That's nothing new, I know, but still. Ravens usually told us something about what we're after by now. I don't know. It's like she, and all the stripes for that matter, know something that we don't. We're still... It's only starting to feel like that after Raven spoke with the zebra who's going to lead us into the jungle to find the place. Apparently, he says it's cursed. But what the heck ain't cursed around here? You can throw a stick up in the air and it's going to land on something that's fucking cursed or something like that. One thing's for sure, I ain't being cursed because of some random bucking rock. Regardless... Raven seems to be taking something, the damn sights, more serious than usual. And anything that bodes ill for her does for us all, I always say. Stripes said something about a temple of the stars and making the worst out of ponies. I didn't get the full details, and didn't want to. All I heard was something about it being older than the world itself and home to the darkness of nightmares. Pretty much the same every hole around here, he asked me. Then there was something about the ink. Beats me what the stuff is. But the stripe says that any pony that touches it will be cursed with a swift and painful death. Not only that, but they'll be cursed to spawn a demon from the depths of their very soul. Sounds like a load of horse apples, if you ask me. Do they really expect us to believe some of that same stuff that we used to write is going to come and kill us all? Not to mention create some kind of evil monster by Celestia. The stripes crack me up sometimes. There ain't no monsters out here other than the damn things that crawl about in the jungle. And we've been here and done all that before. No. All that really is out here for us is a new jackpot. There you guys are. We've been waiting here all afternoon called Rainbow Dash, as Twilight and the others trot up to the large doors of the ruined castle. Ain't that exaggerating a little bit, Sugar Cube? We've only been here for an hour, Applejack responded, offering her rainbow main friend a wry look. Enough time to beat you three hoof wrestles, though, Rainbow responded smugly, prompting the farm pony to roll her eyes. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Are you two gonna do another one? How about best out of ten this time? Pinkie Pie exclaimed loudly as the Pink Earth Pony jumped up and down behind Applejack and Rainbow Dash. I don't know. Depends upon whether AJ here is ready for another loss. Rainbow smirked confidently. Applejack just grumbled something under her breath as she turned away from the Pegasus with a huff and trot towards Twilight and the others. She's right about one thing. Y'all are late, she said. There was a little frustration in her tone as she smiled. Sorry, Applejack. We got kind of sidetracked by something on the road. Twilight confessed, ever so subtly glancing back the direction which she'd come from. There was absolutely no sign of the ship or anything out of the ordinary. Or as ordinary as every forest could be. All she saw was the old rope bridge and the wall of trees beyond as they rustled eerily in the wind. The sky above had become home to a host of dark storms. 
as the rumbling of thunder grew closer. Applejack raised an eyebrow at Twilight's somewhat nervous confession and peered out in the trees. What kind of something? We didn't see nothing when we came through, she asked suspiciously. Neither did we. We only found it because Spike caught it on a vine, Twilight responded, turning back to her friends as the dragon on her back sank with slight embarrassment. Applejack looked ready to voice a response to that, and even Rainbow Dash's attention seemed to be captivated by Twilight's words. But before both of them could even speak, they were interrupted by Pinkie Pie. Oh! The pink pony gasped eagerly, materializing beside Fluttershy, wide eyes peering deeply into the black object that rested upon the Pegasus' back. What do you got there, Fluttershy? It's all pretty and glowy and shiny. Suddenly, uh, the sudden experience uh, from her friend, Fluttershy gasped and jumped back, only to end up fighting to make sure she didn't drop her fragile cargo. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to scare you, Pinkie Pie said apologetically, as Fluttershy finally steadied herself, though she needed a little help from Rarity's magic to do so. Yes, I think we've all had our fair share of startling situations today, Rarity said flatly as Fluttershy took a breath and collected herself. It's all right, Pinkie. As for this little guy, I think it's an egg, she explained, looking over her shoulder at the object with a caring glance. Within moments, Pinkie Pie was back to her usual energetic self, and bouncing rapidly around the yellow pegasus with excitement. Wow, I've never seen an egg like this before. Actually, I've never seen anything quite like this before. It's all glowy. Although, almost like there's a party going on in there or something. Pinkie stated swiftly, earning a small laugh from Fluttershy. I've never seen anything like it either, Pinkie. But whatever it is, it was abandoned in the middle of the forest. She explained sadly. And Pinkie paused. Ah, that's terrible. Well, don't you worry, little guy, because Fluttershy and your good old Auntie Pinkie Pie are here gonna take care of you. She said as she pressed her muzzle to the glistening surface of the sphere. The thing gave a vibrant flash, the light shifting towards Pinkie's face as the dark shape within shifted eagerly. Wow, I think it likes me. Pinkie laughed. If the only one to share the egg's affection was Fluttershy. Rarity made to place a hoof on Pinkie's shoulder, almost as if to pull her away from the thing. But she hesitated as she saw just how much the two seemed to care about it, and glanced at the others in concern. I take it that's something to do with where y'all have been? Applejack asked skeptically. Yeah. How come I'm never around when you guys find something awesome? Rainbow Dash asked in disappointment, her eyes focused on the flickering light within the egg. To be honest, it wasn't really all that great, Rainbow, Twilight admitted, but that did little to dampen the Pegasus' enthusiasm. You're quite right. It was a positively vile place. I'm just worried about... well... Rarity began as she trot up beside Twilight, her words trailing off as she looked back over Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie. She wasn't the only one. Both Twilight and Starlight bore a same concerned look of concern, the latter especially, as the image from the ship played through her mind. But Twilight had seen it too, as she seemed far more focused on the other things right now. So Starlight assumed she should use her mentor's calm reaction to the situation as an example. Besides, what harm could an egg do to the bearers of the Elements of Harmony and one of Equestria's most powerful unicorns in the land? Yeah, care to tell us what it is then? Applejack pressed. The air of concern seemed to spread to her as well. A crashed skyship, Twilight finally sighed. They're a rarity in Equestria, not to mention mostly illegal, so I thought I'd take a look, she added. A sky what? Applejack asked, but her confusion was swiftly interrupted by Rainbow Dash. You saw a skyship? Please tell me it wasn't one of those prissy Canterlot ones, she asked eagerly earning a scowl from Rarity. Twilight shook her head, but the Pegasus' excitement only grew as she began to hover in the air beside Applejack with an eager expression. That's so awesome! I saw one in Cloudsdale when I was a filly. They said it could fly faster than any Pegasus. Rainbow Dash paused for a moment. Of course, that's before I came along and started flying. She added, 
rubbing uh, her hoof to her chest confidently. Applejack rolled her eyes, another low grumble escaping her muzzle. Then she looked up to the darkening sky as another distant rumble of thunder echoed in the forest. Well, y'all might want to continue this conversation inside. The storm's getting mighty close, she suggested, looking back down at her friends as the wind began to blow harder. Yes, I think it would be for the best, Applejack. Rarity agreed, trotting up to the steps and towards the castle's grand door. Applejack, Starlight, and Twilight were quick to follow, as the thunder sounded once more and a flash of lightning lanced across the coming wall of black clouds. Bloodshy, Pinky, come on! You want to be out there when it really starts coming down, Rainbow called to the others as she hovered above the door. Come and dashy, Pinky called, forcing the Pegasus' eyes to roll as the pair passed under her and moved into the castle with Fluttershy's newfound friend. Seconds later, Rainbow Dash flew through the doors, closing them behind her as the first drops of rain began to fall upon the ruined stone and the darkness of the storm flew in the, to consume the forest. We didn't find anything, Twilight stated simply as everyone trod along the long stone hallway. Both herself, Spike, and Applejack led the way, with Starlight and Rarity close behind. Rainbow Dash hovered above just as she always did, as both Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy brought up the rear of the group as the pair went on and on about what may hatch from the mysterious orb. It seemed strange that neither of them felt as weary of the thing as everybody else, yet that only made the others question themselves. Did Pinky and Fluttershy's expectancy make them naive, or did everypony else refusal to make them arrogant? Starlight in particular couldn't shake the feeling, memories of her past servicing at the idea of some kind of bad pony. It was easy to attribute the thoughts as simple anxiety, however, and she swiftly set out in search of a distraction. The walls of the old castle were made from a towering grey stone. The vast surface occasionally marked by a cracked pillar or tattered tapestry. Once or twice, a pile of fallen rubble covered the floor, ruining the already faded rug that lay there. Over every piece of pony-carved architecture, the forest had made its presence known. Small plants pushed in every crack, and the tone and mast of tangled vines clung to many of the walls. More hung throughout the gaping holes in the roof or through the shattered windows, and in some places even large roots tore their way through the floor. Starlight came in with me. The whole place was empty. Well, except for one thing. Twilight went on. And, uh, what might that be? Applejack questioned carefully, and Twilight finally sighed. And we found the captain, at least what was left of her. But it was old. Whatever happened there happened some time ago. Well, that reluctantly explained. You mean you found a dead body? Wow. Everybody's really showing his teeth again. Rainbow Dash said admiringly. Yet, it was the forest that seemed to gain the majority of her respect. More like a pile of twigs than any bones. It was hard to make out them all. At all. Twilight added. Then looked at Starlight. She's right. There's some weary vine stuff all over it. But it did look old. The lilac unicorn stated quickly. Well, Fluttershy certainly found something. Applejack responded swiftly, glancing back at both the Pegasus in question and the very giddy Pinkie Pie. Well, that must have been the only one on board. There was nothing like it on the rest of the ship that we searched. Just some useless records and some weird big crystal vial things. Twilight explained, once again looking back at Starlight for support. All Starlight did was nod. Memory of the scorched parchment Twilight had found in the desk flashed through her mind. She felt a cold dread churning in her as she pondered why some pony would go to such great lengths to hide where they'd been. So, where'd you find that thing exactly? Applejack asked, but Twilight merely looked at Rarity. I think she found it in the mud near the front half. One minute she was standing there, the next she had it in her hooves, Rarity said taken slightly off guard by the direction of the conversation. Well, I know there have been any pony good with animals is Fluttershy, Applejack responded reasonably. I'm well aware of that, dear, but don't you just look at it and, well, 
I don't know. Maybe it's just that this place has gotten to me. But it feels rather odd, don't you think? Rarity asked, that concern still bright in her eyes as she awaited her pony's response. I bet it wasn't that scary. You'll have to show me when we go back, Rainbow Dash ordered confidently, earning herself another sour glare from Rarity. Yeah, but no pony should go meddling in what they don't understand. It's not safe, especially when that something comes from the Everfree, Applejack warned, eyeing Rainbow sternly. I think when it comes to animals from the forest, Fluttershy knows what she's doing, AJ. She's lived on its edge most of her life, Rainbow Dash retorted, and Applejack frowned. That ain't what I'm saying, Rainbow. What I'm saying is that now that things in Fluttershy's capable hooves, there's no need for anyone else to go blundering around in the forest, Applejack argued stubbornly. All the while, Rainbow moved to retort with something witty before she was interrupted by Twilight. Applejack's right. Fluttershy knows what she's doing. Besides, I don't think anybody wants to go back out there in the storm, Twilight said, silencing them both. Yeah, as long as Fluttershy's new friend isn't trying to be some ugly, bad bee dragon eating thing, I'm fine. Spike interjected, slouching down against Twilight's mane. Don't worry. If that's how bad, I know. It'll. I'll totally be able to take it on. Rainbow Dash boasted proudly. Just like you took down that dragon? Applejack added wittily. Hey, that was different. Besides, it's not going to be a full-grown dragon's going to come out of an egg that big, AJ. Rainbow Dash argued defensively, causing the farm pony to snicker. Hey, you're not talking about Walter, are you? The sound of Pinky's voice was so sudden that it once again made every pony jump. Even Rainbow Dash swivered in the air, then went to great effort to cover up the fact. Who's Walter? Twilight asked, collecting herself. He's a new friend, silly. Or he will be. He just has to hatch first. Which Fluttershy thinks is going to happen soon. So, I'll have to come up with a great big happy birthday party for him real quick. I'll need streamers, balloons, cake, and presents. Can't have a first birthday without presents. Pinky explained rapidly, before gasping for air. Wait, wait, wait. You named the egg? Rainbow asked in skeptical surprise. Of course. Every pony's got to have a name, silly. Although, considering that we don't know what he is yet... He? Twilight asked, raising an eyebrow. Yeah, I think it's going to be a boy. Call it a hunch, Pinky said, waving a hoof dismissively. Well, whatever it's going to be, it's going to need a place to hatch. Fluttershy added as she trotted up beside Pinky. How do you know it's going to hatch, anyway? Asked Starlight as she received a very close look at this object. The light had shifted once more, seeming to almost follow her eyes as they passed over its shimmering surface. It felt like there was something in there that was staring back at her. She couldn't quite make it out, but whatever it was, it moved like a sickly black liquid into a glowing soup, squirming and writhing as if it wanted to break free. Oh, well, whatever's inside seems very restless. I haven't heard it make any noises yet, which is what some animals do when they're about to hatch. This species may be different. Fluttershy explained, glancing back at the egg over her shoulder. The moment she did so, Starlight shied away to redirect her eyes to the ruined corridor ahead as several large doors came into view. Every pony else other than Pinky looked at Fluttershy within mounting skepticism. Even Rainbow Dash's bold confidence at her Pegasus friend, didn't seem strong enough to hold back her growing doubts. We'll take you to the library. We've been meaning to show Starlight some books anyway. So if you think it's going to hatch, at least we'll have some place to read while we wait. Twilight offered, and Fluttershy smiled appreciatively as she expressed her thanks. Ooh, maybe we can find some books on eggs, or ones that tell us what it is, or it's going to come out, or... Pinky began. But she was silenced seconds later by Rainbow Dash placing hoof over her mouth. Okay, Pinky, I think we get it, she said with her ever so small hint of annoyance. Pinkie Pie smiled apologetically and sank down at Fluttershy's side. Don't worry, Walter, your Auntie Rainbow Dash is not always that mean, she whispered to the egg. I'm not that thing's aunt, Pinky. Rainbow groaned as everybody moved through the 
crooked wooden door into the massive library chamber. By Celestia! I've never seen so many books before! Starlight gasped as her shocked eyes passed over the towering shelves of ancient knowledge, all free for the taking. Rows upon rows of old books towered upwards into the darkness that lingered amidst the great support beams of the arched roof above. Rubble and debris covered the floor, crushing tables and fallen shelves under the mighty weight. Nevertheless, it looked far cleaner than most ruined castles should. That illusion of clarity was somewhat hindered by the rain and dribbled noisily down from several large holes in the ceiling, beyond which the swirling sky churned and flashed with bright lightning. The bright flickers of the storm revealed stark images of the far side of the library, untouched by the magical glow of any pony's horn. In the gloom, there were more books, not to mention the head of a great alicorn statue, that only looked a little unsettling as its stoic face was illuminated by mere seconds of light. The only other light that emanated from within the depths was a particular sphere, as Fluttershy had made her way towards a small doorway in the library's right wall. Fluttershy and Rarity trod along. The former still moved with a giddy bounce in her step, while the latter looked a little more akin to a concerned mother trying to ensure their foal wouldn't go out and hurt themselves. Well, at least the place hasn't changed too much, Twilight observed as her eyes scoured the towering shelves. I'll say, but the amount of effort we put into cleaning up this place, Applejack added words saturated by a hint of pride. So, you want to take a look around? Twilight asked, turning to Starlight eagerly. Despite all the anxiety building up in her mind and the constant images of what she'd seen on the ship rushing through her mind, Starlight couldn't tell but mentally squee at the sight of so much untouched information. She'd not been over all of Equestria searching for power and magic for nothing, and now she'd hit the jackpot. Sure, although I'll have to find some place to start she admitted, looking rather like an excited filly in a vast candy shop than one of Equestria's most advanced unicorns. Twilight only smiled at the giddiness of her student. To her, the sight of somebody else so willing and excited to learn was priceless, and the idea she'd been the one to introduce such a willing one made her all the more overjoyed. At Starlight's words, she began looking over the great wall of books thoughtfully. I'd say let's take a look at the southwest wing. That's near where I found the diary of the two sisters. So, there has to be more interesting stuff there. Yeah, just be careful you don't find any books hidden behind secret doors or anything. Spike added with a shiver. Twilight's countenance had fallen ever so slightly flat. Thanks, but what about you? Starlight asked, and Twilight shifted, uh, swiftly recovered, from her mild frustration. Oh, don't worry about me. I think I've got some research of skyships to do, not to mention looking to see if I can find anything else about a new friend. She responded, glancing back at the small sitting area into which the others had taken the orb. The glowing object sat in the center of the room, a makeshift nest of shaft cushions forming a ring around it as it flickered and shifted with increasing ferocity. Fluttershy watched it with wary curiosity, her sensible action only supporting the fact that she didn't know what she was doing. Pinkie Pie, another hoof, was crouching like a dog ready to pounce on the thing, eagerly calling out every time she saw any sign of movement from her new friend. Well, while y'all are doing that, I'm gonna make sure no pony ends uh, hurting themselves, Applejack said as she began trotting toward the sitting room. Rainbow Dash looked to the farm pony for a second, then back at the others as they began to move over to the shelves. Yay. I like books as much as the next pony, but these are just not my kind of books, she admitted, rubbing a hoof on the back of her neck before darting off after Applejack, before any pony could question her. Hey, hey Jay, wait up. If this thing's turned out to be some kind of super dragon, I want to see it too. Well, I guess that just leaves us. Ready to find some books, Spike? Well, I'd asked as she expected as much. Her words ushered a determined salute from the baby dragon upon her back, and he murmured something along the lines of her number one assistant was always ready. Meanwhile, Starlight trotted over to the shelves Twilight had pointed out, and after a long few minutes of looking, 
brought several interesting books over and onto the middle tables. It was no coincidence that she chose a table with a full view of the room to contain the majority of her friends. She was not about to wander off into the gloom or sit in the rain. Looking into the smaller chamber before her, she saw the others as they all watched over the glowing sphere between them with mixed expressions. Well, I can't find anything on our new friend, but I did find this, Twilight suddenly stated, with her voice and the fact that she dropped a book down on the table beside Starlight almost made the unicorn jump right out of her skin. At least, I think it's similar. It's a charter on one of the first skyship trades from before even Celestia and Luna came to power. And that's wonderful, Twilight. Starlight responded, pressing a hoof to her chest as she slowed her frightening breaths and collected herself. Twilight just nodded, then buried her face in the book, just as she always did. Spike jumped from her back and took a seat on the table between the two ponies. Funny. I thought it would have taken longer, he said, sounding a little dissatisfied. Well, what can you expect from Equestria's number one assistant? Starlight said, hiding her fear with a small laugh. Don't you know it, the baby dragon responded, leaning against Starlight's shoulder with one of his claws as he inspected the others confidently. Of course, Spike, Twilight added with only a small portion of her attention. Well, according to this, the only trade route that went over the Everfree Forest was the Central Equestrian Airway. But this is over a thousand years old, so I have no idea how much could have changed in that time. Twilight seemed to be mumbling the explanation more to herself than anybody else. I'd be surprised if it hadn't. Starlight responded, closing her own book as she added, Can you make out anywhere that they may have come from? Twilight cocked her head as she thought, rubbing a forehoof under her chin. Given the way the ship's facing, I'd say somewhere from the southeast. Yet, I have no idea, really. One thing I do know is that Skyjacks are usually willing to transport anything for the right price, no matter what it is or what their employer would do with it. Starlight opened her muzzle to respond, yet a great flash of lightning and booming rumble of thunder cut her off. Not to mention put a stop to Spike's confident display as the dragon leaped up onto Starlight's back like some kind of frightened kitten. The sharp touch of his claws made the unicorn wince, but no quicker did she feel the pain was she jumping to her own hooves and backpedaling from the table. From the holes in the ceiling, rain began to shimmer down and dance as the wind picked up. It began hitting the table with a light series of pitter-patters, and the wet disturbance was enough to shake Twilight free of her research. Looking up, she closed her book in an effort to defend it from the water's assault. On second thought, maybe it's better we don't read in here, she said, nodding to the chamber in which her friends were sat. Yeah, that sounds good, Spike added, eyes fixed on the storm above as he shivered. Trotting towards the room, however, it was hard to hide the fact that there was a little difference between the storm outside and the cold darkness within the castle. That freezing feeling of dread only grew as they entered the room and caught a glimpse of the glow that emanated from the center. The blue light flickered and pulsed with far more ferocity than it had done previously as if the attention and presence of others was somehow awakening whatever was inside from its stillness. The image of the ship's wrecked interior passed through Starlight's mind again, and she gulped, taking a seat furthest away from the thing as Twilight settled down with a book just beside her. The orb gave off another heavy shudder, and Fluttershy raised her head expectantly, studying the thing's actions with a knowledge and understanding gathered over many years of seeing other creatures do the same thing. Pinkie Pie leaped up with anticipation, pausing in mid-air expectantly, then falling to the ground moments later as the orb did little more than twitch or shudder. She looked at Fluttershy and the yellow pegasus gave a soft little laugh. You can't rush these things, Pinky. It'll hatch when it's ready, Fluttershy reprimanded. I know, I know. It's just so exciting. Are you not excited? Because I'm so excited, Pinky Pie exclaimed eagerly. Yeah, Pinky. We're all very excited to meet our new friend. But if you keep bouncing around, you're going to smash the thing before it gets a chance to do anything. Rainbow responded reasonably, despite the tiredness in her dry tone. Rainbow's right, Sugar Cube. I think the best thing it needs is some point of not jumping around and making a lot of noise. Applejack added, resulting in the reluctance 
and a nod from Fluttershy. Clearly, the yellow pegasus didn't quite have it in her to quell her friend's excitement, not while holding back her own with a sensibly masked clarity. Nevertheless, Pinky sat back, making a motion as if zipping her mouth shut as her eyes once again became fixed on the relentless shape. Applejack leaned back and sat down beside Rarity, who was doing her best to hide her concern by distracting herself with the state of a raincoat. The same can be said for Starlight as she watched the flickering light grow with even more violent within the shimmering cell. She could tell that Spike was peering up overhead tentatively. Then there was a small crack. Every pony stood up sharply. Even Twilight was torn from her book by the sound of the orb shifting and gave another small sound. Starlight felt her heart began to race, and her skin crawl as it moved again. And every pony other than Fluttershy and Pinky looked at one another. Rarity even went as far as to taking a wary step back. Fluttershy glanced up at her friends, and Pinkie Pie looked directly down at the orb as a small split broke open across the top. The pink pony mumbled something about from behind her sealed lips as the crack grew like spiderweb across the black shell, and the blue glow surged brightly. Then it flickered out and died. Fluttershy's eyes widened with alarm, and she crouched down to peer to the inside of the sphere as it went dark. Then there was another shudder, and the thing's whole top cracked open with a firm shake. It all happened in an instant. The top of the thing exploded in a shower of small shell fragments and a vicious black slime. Fluttershy scurried back along the floor in surprise, her legs kicking in the dust as she did so. Meanwhile, the surge of black liquid struck Pinky in the face. There was a steaming hiss and an intense, pungent smell filling the room as the pink pony let out a painful scream. Her silence broken, her mouth tore open through the sticky black mass before her ever-bubbling slime forced her face to contort as it flooded back across her coat with ravenous hunger. Several more splashes of the stuff stuck her legs, and in an instant, they all began to twist the flesh into repungent black growths and swollen blisters. Every pony rushed forward in alarm, only to be forced back as Pinky kicked and bucked with merciful, muffled cries of terrified agony. Applejack moved her grip to her hind hooves, but received a frantic kick in the face for her efforts. Rainbow Dash moved to grab from overhead, but was caught uh, dodging more of the black slime that was flung across the room by Pinky's frantic thrashing. Even the magic of telekinesis failed to do anything more than force every unicorn in the room to wince in pain as the black substance turned their magic into a foul black aura. The pool of solidifying black goo around the shattered sphere didn't help as it crawled out across the floor. In her panicked flurry, Pinkie Pie frantically spun through it, and yet more of the stuff lashed onto her hooves. When the mass stopped upon her face, it began to twinge and convulse as it tightened. Bubbling blisters began to sprout from the twisted dark masses as it spread down her neck and covered her ears, using them back with her skull. Forced back to the very edge of the room, no one could do anything as Pinky gave out one last muffled scream. Her throat gargled as it filled with liquid. Then there was an ear-splitting crunch, and Pinky's sudden shuddered violently. Her body sagged for a short moment. Every pony felt a deep dread as their afflicted friend stood there, swaying like a ghostly statue for a long moment. Then, as they dared place their hooves forward, Pinkie Pie reared up and blindly bolted from the room as fast as her grotesquely twisted limbs could